one. Joining us, the head coach of the Cavaliers, Jamie Klusman. Coach, coming off a 86-58 loss at Carson Newman. That was a game that just kind of got sprung on you there with some COVID-19 issues throughout the conference. Uh, we'll quickly touch on that game before looking at the mountain lines. Uh, your takeaways from that game, uh, is there anything positive takeaway? Is it just one you, you put the tape in the, uh, the old fire pit and move on? You definitely put it in the fire pit and move on. You know, it, I know it was sprung on us, but we had just recently played them. Uh, I thought we made some good adjustments on Lindsey Taylor. We held her, I think, to 12 points. Um, but then we let Braylon Weichel go off for 36, 37, whatever it was. But, you know, I think it comes down to us just being careless with the ball with 27 turnovers. We finished the second quarter, first half, eight turnovers out of the last 11 possessions. So instead of being down five at halftime, we were down 15. And you can't do that against Carson Newman. Uh, you know, you, di you dig a hole that deep, you're not going to recover from it. Looking ahead now, taking on a Concord team, it's someone you're very familiar with, obviously played in that program. Uh, and arguably they have the best forward in the country in Riley Fitzwater, leads the nation in block shots, leads the nation in field goal percentage. Uh, she's top 10 in uh, rebounding, top 10 in double doubles. Talk about the mountain lines and uh, a player in Fitzwater that you're familiar with. She's a graduate student. Yeah, I mean, like you said, All-American, um, just an incredible player. You know, she has some of the best hands of any big that I've seen probably at our level, honestly. Uh, so, you know, if she catches the ball anywhere within two to three feet of the block, it's automatic bucket for her. So, you know, we'll just game plan like we have uh, against her previously. We're going to try to move her off the block, try to establish a position early on her to prevent her from getting to those automatic buckets. Um, you know, and it, but it comes down to her guards. We've got to have better on-ball pressure to help our post players out. Uh, make those post-entry passes a lot tougher uh, than what we've been doing uh, as of recent in any of our games. Uh, you know, we had a good look at them early. You know, we scrimmaged them. I know it was a scrimmage, but at least our girls are familiar with their personnel. And, uh, you know, we kind of know what they bring to the table. Uh, and just being familiar with the program, uh, Coach Oz, you know, he's he's changed a few of his offensive tendencies, but um, – the thing he has done is change his play calls, which is uh, a big shock to me, but still running the same action. So, you know, it was just go in with the game plan and be ready to go. You talked about getting your guards going. Caitlin Ross, uh, probably one of her better offensive games is seasonally scoring against Carson Newman. And it's been two and a half years since we played Concord, but the last time we played him, uh, Caitlin was big. She had 18 points and a win over the Mountain Lions. Yeah, I felt like uh, she created some – energy and effort and all that from her defense. And I think that propelled her offense. So, you know, if we can just get her going on both ends, she's going to build the confidence to go in and knock down shots and get to the rim and take those higher percentage shots. But, you know, if we can get Caitlin going, you know, alongside of Nia and Meg and Ken's coming off the bench with our scoring, uh, you know, that's, that's going to help us tremendously. Um, I feel like we've had good looks. Uh, we're just not knocking down shots right now for whatever reason, but, you know, we typically go as Caitlin goes, so uh, not to put any pressure on her, but, you know, she's building that confidence, getting back to the old Caitlin Ross that we all know. Coach, it's, it's a program that you played in. You're a graduate of Concord. You're a competitive person. When I play people in my family, I would rather beat them than anyone. Now, when I don't play them at something, I want them to succeed. Uh, speak on that a little bit, and, and internally, do you get up a little bit more for this one, uh, wanting to beat your former coach and the school that you played at? Absolutely. You know, I, I want them to win every single game, except when, you know, I'm on the other side of them. But, you know, I, I watch as many of their games as I can. You know, I owe so much to Coach Osborne and the opportunity that he gave me as a player. And then I was able to start my coaching career under him. So I'll uh, forever be grateful for him. But, you know, I, I am his biggest fan, but also his biggest critic. And, you know, we have a very unique uh, relationship. So, He's someone that I constantly talk to, uh, even, you know, in our struggles. Like he's someone, the very first person I reach out to. So, you know, it's it's always fun to go against him, but it's also tough at times because um, just the amount of energy and time that I put into that program. So sometimes it, it's a very emotional game for me, for sure. The last time out against Concord, your team got the victory. What will be the keys to winning two in a row over the Mountain Lions? Uh, just trying to limit Riley the best that we can, uh, but we also have to guard the three-point line. Uh, pretty good three-point shooting team. 
Um, but I think rebounding and attacking their zone, we're going to see uh, two, three zone on makes. So we're going to see man to man uh, on misses. So we know exactly what's coming. We just have to, you know, be the aggressors and not take a back seat when a team jumps into a zone. Tip off, 530 Monday to the prior center. It's the Concord Mountain Lions and UVA Wise Cavaliers. Coach, thank you for your time and good luck. Thank you.